millions of students participate in the same competitive exam using the same methods practicing the same way how do you plan to beat millions of people participating in a same competition using the same techniques they are using what if i tell you that your success doesn't come from how hard you study but how smart you study every topper that you have ever heard of has something in common they understand the importance of strategy it's not about cramming textbooks or solving endless questions it's about how you navigate through your preparation smartly my name is sunny and today on cinematic we'll dive into four unconventional strategies that i used during my preparation that got me into iit bombay these strategies will give you a distinct edge in any kind of exam you're going to appear in these are not your regular study tips they are designed to break the mold and elevate your performance in ways you might have never ever heard before strategy number 1 q t n k m It's an abbreviation to questions that nearly killed me. It's a diary that I used to keep during my competitive exams preparation. I built this concept to develop an emotional corner for the questions that I'm solving. See, your subconscious brain stores the information only when you are emotionally invested in it. If you aren't emotionally invested in what you are studying, your brain won't store the information no matter how hard you try to memorize it. Your brain stores something only when it senses a pure relation between you and that information. only then it treats that information as valuable that's why you remember why rahul broke his bond with neha in their toxic relationship but won't remember why carbon broke its bond with bromine during hydrolysis and when i say cleavage your mind is not even close to the cleavage of carbon carbon bond in beta keto acid during decarboxylation that i'm talking about if i wasn't able to solve a particular question i used to take it very personally and then i used to go on a side quest on the internet to find the detailed solution to that question and then i used to write the detailed solution to that question in this book while solving questions from any textbook or any question paper if i wasn't able to solve that question no matter how hard i try it i used to circle that question then after getting home i used to go on a side quest on the internet maybe quora reddit or any other website or any blog or maybe university lectures on youtube and then i used to write my own detailed solution to that question If I couldn't find the solution or even hint to that solution anywhere on the internet I used to email university professors and the reply that they used to give me I used to solve or find solution on the internet based on those clues like a detective and it was quite of a fun activity for me there were a few instances when I couldn't find a particular solution or I couldn't grasp the conceptual problems uh, from the book concepts of physics by H C Verma I used to email Professor H C Verma about the question, and he is so humble that he used to reply each of my emails with the particular solution or at least a hint of it. I am not asking you to keep finding solutions on the internet instead of solving it yourself. It's about the questions that are too tough or the questions that even get sweat out of your coaching teachers. That's when you go on the internet to find the solution to those questions or maybe you come up with such a good question that even if you ask your coaching teacher about that doubt about a particular conceptual problem and if that teacher is not able to solve it or maybe your friends don't get it and maybe it's a good question that's when you actually email other professors the world is an open place once you understand how to use the internet smartly you will be able to find anything on the internet no matter what kind of solution you are going for trust me googling is a skill once you gain this skill you will even be able to monetize it in the future as a researcher or as a copywriter after finding the solution by any means let that be on quora or by mailing the writer of that textbook i used to write a detailed solution of that uh, question in this book qtn km to have a proper understanding of that concept here you can see a question that i have noted down A sphere is just immersed in a liquid. Find the ratio of hydrostatic force on the bottom half and top half of the sphere. It's a cute little question, but it took me so long to find the solution to this question. I uh, uploaded this question on brilliant.org. It's a website that I used to go through a couple of times in a week to solve some practical questions. because this website has a lot of fun engineering type questions on it and i uploaded this question on that website and after a couple of days somebody wrote a good solution to that question in short but then i again took some hints from that question and i went on the internet to find a proper detailed explanation to that so here you can see the detailed question and the answer is 5 
five just to get a numerical value of five this is the length of solution that i had to go through they that's the purpose of this book this book has cute little questions that takes too long for it to solve it also uh, makes it clear for me that uh, if a question like this appears in your main exam if it is j advanced and uh, the question might appear really little and you might uh, spend some time on it but uh, then you'll understand that you are not able to solve it because the solution is very lengthy so solving such questions uh, in this book makes it clear if i have to skip such question in real exam or not see there will be instances when the question is very little and your brain thinks that uh, it will take less amount of time to solve but compared to big ass questions these cute little questions will ruin your marks this entire side quest for a single question used to develop an emotional relation with the concept that was dealt within the question this would make my brain think that the information consumed in this little voyage was important and valuable making me remember it strategy 2 flash cards if it's not emotion then it's repetition if you don't have any emotion associated to the fact that you are memorizing or the concept that you are learning you can remember it through repetition and that's through flash cards if a certain piece of information was a bit difficult for me to remember i used to create a flash card about it writing the information on that flash card in different forms it could be in the form of a set of bullet points in the form of a joke or in the form of a diagram and whenever i was done with the day schedule i used to go through these flash cards narrating whatever that was told or just reading it and remember it this repeated action of going through those cards used to store that information well in my head in organic chemistry is the subject that i hated the most because it requires you to memorize a thousand things and that's the reason i used to study this subject with the most creative methods one among those methods was writing jokes here's an example me hey i want some milk farmer to his servant give this guy some milk of magnesia me bro i don't want a suspension of magnesium hydroxide in water i just want a normal milk to drink farmer magnesia is my cow's name the joke might be very lame sometimes but its purpose is not to make somebody laugh but just to make it easier to memorize that information in the form of joke because it creates an emotional value to it because you laugh at it as i have told you before our subconscious brain stores the information only when it sees an emotional value in that information or if it sees that that particular information is uh, valuable or useful or practical in real life now particularly memorizing the fact that the suspension of magnesium hydroxide in water is called as milk of magnesia serves no purpose in real life for you so hearing it in the form of a joke stores that information permanently in your head strategy number 3 solution manuals the competitive exam you are preparing for has an objective nature the questions could be multiple choice multiple correct match the following or numerical value questions the problem is this objective nature of that exam triggers intuitive nature of your brain to study for an exam we need both intellect and intuition intellect dissects things and understands that concept to the depth you consciously make efforts and solve things while on the other hand intuition is the gut feeling and it solves things unconsciously the tests you participate in your coaching on a regular basis which could be weekly create a strong intuition but the lack of subjective questions in those tests don't let your intellect develop properly to understand what i mean focus on the instances when you solve a question by marking the option even if it turns out to be correct if somebody asks you how you solved it you won't be able to come up with a solution or you won't be able to write a subjective solution to that question that's because most of the solution was processed in your brain by intuitive thoughts the main difference between intellect and intuition is that intuition does increase your speed but it reduces your accuracy while intellect is slow but it is very accurate so you have to efficiently use the mixture of intuition and intellect during the exam such that you can solve the question with maximum accuracy while maintaining a good speed throughout the exam it is like this equation n1 times intuition plus n2 times intellect should be always greater than intellect or intuition where n1 plus n2 is equal to 1 i came up with this equation randomly and it does make sense to me now as i've explained 
the objective nature of your test trigger the intuition and intuition is made strong through practice but what about intellect how do you make it strong during my preparation i came up with the method of solution manuals every saturday our coaching used to conduct a test on the current curriculum and right after the test we used to get the answer key so the remaining saturday and sunday i used to solve those 90 questions subjectively with proper detailed answers in my solution manual books each question with a proper explanation right to the minute details as if i was explaining the solution to a 5 year old as they say if you can't explain a concept to a 5 year old you don't understand it well enough These are the books I failed completely with my pen writing detailed solutions. Each book has a separate number and the question papers are still chronologically stored in these folders. Here's one question paper. It's 23rd weekly test and I have marked the number on each of the papers and this is one of the solution manuals I created. As you can see, I have marked the beginning of each paper solution with sticky notes colored papers so that whenever I find i think that this is a solution that i am looking for i will be easily able to find it within these books here you can see i have marked weekly test 23 which is this papers solution and even the index is filled with weekly test 21 22 and 23 so that i can easily find it and each of this question papers is properly stapled with the error list that the coaching used to give us which mentioned the questions what were marked by me and which one of them were wrong and the answer key it's stable too and here you can see i used to give star ratings to a lot of questions based on the complexity and difficulty of the question let's uh, go through this question it's uh, something that i've marked for three stars so a circular tube of uniform cross section is filled with two liquids of density rho1 and rho2 such that half of each liquid occupies a quarter of volume of the tube If the line joining the free surface of the liquids makes an angle theta with horizontal, then tan theta is equal to. So this equation is given. Tan theta is equal to rho one minus k one rho two by k two rho one plus rho two, where k one and k two are integers. We just have to find the numerical value of k one by k two. So it's a numerical question, integer type question, and we have to find the numerical value of k one by k two. So let's just have a look at the solution that I have written for this question. just to give uh, an example to you to what level i used to write a detailed solution so here you can see the solution here i have drawn the diagram and just have a look at the solution from here i have written all the details and to the last step the answer is so one just to get the one i had to solve this much none of the steps are skipped each step is explained with detail like here you can see this value is in equation 2 this is in equation 1 i have named each equation i have uh, explained each term so that i understand each term by myself it is as if i am writing a proper subjective solution for 12th board exams imagine writing 12th board exams level solution for je level questions strategy number 4 non linear notes writing notes in your notebook just like everybody the style is linear we go through each notes it could be bullet points it could be diagrams or it could be just a paragraph the style is always linear we linearly go through every page but during my preparation i mostly used to make non linear notes in the form of mind maps the usual linear noting style has a lot of drawbacks the linear notes have unnecessary use of grammar and other words which just increase the length of each sentence and there's no significant difference between your notes and a textbook if you already have information well presented in textbooks then why copy it in your notebook in your bad handwriting see the purpose of writing notes is to help you with solving questions in the future but when in the future you get stuck with the question and you have to go through a glimpse of the concept that's being used in that question or the formula that's being used in that question you have to go through your linear notes and for that you have to go through this procedure amidst solving that question you have to put your pen down you have to get up from your chair you have to travel to your bookshelf you have to find the particular notebook amongst a lot of notebooks then you have to open the pages and find that particular concept 
through a lot of pages you have to go to that topic and then you find it this creates a lot of resistance and maybe because of it you won't have proper mood to solve questions and this thing will keep happening if you go through a question and feel that this concept is written somewhere in your notes and you don't remember it you will be very lazy to go to the bookshelf and find that book so you will postpone solving that question and you might never ever solve that question again and it might appear in the main exam and when you are in your revision phase of your competitive exam going through the linear notes just to revise the concepts takes a lot of time and that's how during the revision phase of my preparation i came up with concept maps here's an example from organic chemistry the problem with organic chemistry is that there are hundreds of named reactions and these named reactions aren't present anywhere on the internet with a chronological order and writing each named reaction chronologically in your notes is extremely difficult when it comes to linear notes because the pages just go on so i created this this is a single page with 235 named reactions chronologically written from a to w so instead of just scrolling through the pages i can directly find the named reaction here and the corresponding number reaction is on the next two pages for example you are solving previous years papers and you find a question that requires you to remember wolf kishner reaction so just like dictionary you go to w and find wolf kishner reaction at 235 number and on the next two pages you go to 235 number and here's the reaction here's an example of electrostatics chapter from physics the entire chapter is covered in the single page i literally stopped going through my linear notes when i was in my revision phase just because i had these non-linear notes one page for one chapter pasted all over my room on the walls there are a lot of advantages of making non-linear style notes in the form of mind maps first you don't have to use grammar at all only when it's very necessary so that you don't misinterpret the information the sentences are shortened to the highest extent second it is entirely different from the presentation of information in a textbook you aren't just blindly copying from the textbook in your bad handwriting you are making something of your own hence even though the information is already present in a textbook it's worth writing it again in these maps third when you are stuck with a question in the future and you aren't able to remember the concept or the formula so instead of going through the procedure that i named before you just have to have a glimpse at the wall that's it fourth you will never feel lazy to have a check at the concept because you won't have to go through that procedure hence you will never skip a question and fifth during the revision phase of your competitive exam going through these maps is extremely easy you just have to have a glance at the concepts on a single page which hardly takes 10 to 20 minutes and these were the four unconventional strategies that i came up with during my preparation this guys is how you prepare for exams it has to be interesting and you have to create something of your own thanks for watching